so this is a new what if. What if Deku was a Greek legend? No, this isn't one of new what if. This is what if Deku was a Greek legend part two. Now, guys, basically part one got a couple of views. I'm pretty sure it got a good, a good amount of views. I think got a uh, good amount of views. Now, that video, I did stutter a lot a little bit, but I want to do part two because, you know, someone asked for it. And honestly, I like this what if idea a lot. So, guys, basically, after this what if, I'm going to be uploading what if Irima had the Omnitrix, and I'm going to be uploading what if Deku. And no, I'm going to be uploading what if. Um, what was it? Um, Callum from the Dragon Prince TV show on Netflix had the Omnitrix part two because. I'm watching the Calm series for the first time, and I'm probably going to make those part twos and ones a lot, you know, closer to each part. So, yeah. So, basically, let's get started, guys. Where Deku was a Greek legend, part two. Now, guys, we're going to start our story off. Uh, last time I left off, after Deku went back to the um, house or the area where Bakugo Kirishima lived. Now, Bakugo Kirishima and this can are going to be brothers. And basically, Deku would walk up in there and start, you know, become friends with them. Now, eventually, Deku would basically become, pretty much, live there. Bakugo would still have the same personality, and Kirishima would still be, you know, cool and stuff. And they would both be the grandsons of a, of a demigod that would have the ability, uh, pretty much, they would be demigods of time. So that, and then you would have a bunch of time, you know, objects that can control time, like a time or a time controlling glove and knife, now that that now Deku has. Now basically, Deku will, and I didn't explain. Let's explain Deku's powers if you haven't seen part one. Deku has superhuman strength, agility, and speed, and also reflexes. Deku also has the sight ability to control lightning. And when Deku uses his superhuman strength, like Superman, level, Superman levels of strength, it does overexhaust his body to the point of his nose bleeding or his body pretty much becoming super strained. Now, basically, Deku would be going to the castle, basically getting ready for the next match. Now, this match would actually be a, a quest for a little girl that would be asking about, you know, her sister. Now, that could be confused after going out to get some, to run some, you know, errands to get some food for Bakugo and Kirishima. And, if you don't know, um, basically, um, if you don't know, Greek legend, basically is set in the Greek mythology times at Atlantis, or at Atlantis before it sunk. Basically, Deku would be going down there and be asking, you know, why, or where's your, you know, parents or your family a little girl she would explain that my you know mom was captured by a bunch of ogres and now she's being you know her mom was captured by a bunch of sen uh, senators no sorry <laughs> a bunch of ogres and they're threatening to kill her if she doesn't get enough you know people for them to feed on so basically Deku had an idea, because he was also told by Zeus to help multiple people become a very, you know, known hero. He may be saving this girl's family when he give him that much credit or give him that much fame, but it would still give him, well, make him a hero, because he would still, you know, help the little girl. So he would help the little girl, and he would have gotten ready. You know, he would have put on his, you know, Greek, pretty much put on his robe with his, you know, shoes or anything, his flippers or whatever. And would take the time knife, put it in his sheath or his sword sheath that was shortened to fit the knife. And would have gone and let the girl follow him towards the ogre. Now he would have told Kirishima and Bakugo. And Kirishima would actually go with Deku. Because Kirishima was... Bakugo would be staying back, pretty much caring for the um, hellhound the king gave up to them for the whole time, you know. Um task that happened in part one. So basically, Deku would have ran pretty much into the forest with the little girl following him towards the cave where the ogres were. And the girl smiles saying they are so gullible. The girl and the ogres knew that Deku was a demigod, a very powerful one at that, and the strongest, and pretty much lured him here to take him out so he wouldn't become such a strong hero and extinguish, you know, darkness from the lands. So they would 
they would ambush Deku and try to take him out. Now Deku would have taken out his top, his knife, not really using the time part of it, but about to take down all the ogres. Now he would have been scratching and slicing and killing the ogres left and right. No, sorry, wrong word. He would have been taking out the ogres left and right. YouTube, please. Basically, he would have been kicking down ogres left and right. Eventually, came to a point where he would get grabbed by a go ogre and started to get pretty much strangled or he would be hugged to death. Hugged to, you know, very hard. So he would have been coughing up blood and Deku would have tried to open, you know, the grasp of the ogre, starting to stab the ogre's fingers, but nothing would have come to avail because the ogre was so determined to take down Deku. Deku would try to rip out of the ogre's grip, eventually looking around, seeing that Kirishima was running around, taking down more ogres with his pretty much time ability, his time glove, basically grabbing, um, grabbing multiple ogres and reversing them back, reversing them so, you know, back in time, so far in time that they would turn to dust. Now, he would have ran over to Deku and reverted the ogre into a child or a... Well, it was reverted the ogre into a fetus, and pretty much the ogre just, you know, perished. So Deku would have gotten up from, you know, the whole tire, his bones cracking and everything, and he would have slowly started to heal since of his demi human blood, but it wouldn't be super healing, he'd just be healing two times faster than the average human. Deku would have been pretty much, you know, limping a little bit, walking into the cave. Seen some sort of artifact. This artifact would actually be some sort of sword. Now he would have been walked towards the sword trying to grab it, but would have been hit with a huge blast of magic. Now this magic would come from a dark, pretty much half elf. Now guys, Greek mythology times, basically they just say medieval, you know, monsters do exist, okay? So basically, the elf would have been throwing magic or some sort of power towards the to try and keep them at bay. Now basically Kirishima would have taken um Kirishima would have taken cover, basically um aging the walls of the cave to a point where it would have started collapsing the cave. The mage or the elf started falling out to the ground after the cave started shaking and he would have ran over to the sword that was on display, grabbing it and throwing it towards Deku. Deku would have grabbed it and they would have ran out the cave, the cave collapsing and Pretty much taking out the elf inside, or they supposed that that would happen. But basically, Deku and Kishima would run out the cave and be very, you know, discerned and concerned on how, you know, ogres wanted Deku gone so much, so dead so much. So basically, Deku would be getting up after you know running a lot and pushing his limits because he was still had broken ribs and stuff. So he would have gone to a doctor, or a healer, and he would have been healed, but he would have been, you know, bedridden for about a day. Now this, now he would take days off, and basically he would have actually gotten a note from the king, the king asking Deku to do a tournament for him. And this tournament was to see who should be the, the king's, you know, the king's, well, the princess's husband. Now basically, Deku was confused, but said, but you know, he did take down the Minotaur, and he was crowned the you know strongest man in the in Atlantis. So Deku did take the offer, not knowing what the princesses the princess looked like. Basically, Kirishima and Bakugo said the princess is the most beautiful woman in the island, based or in the world, pretty much telling him that the pretty much princess, and being married to a royal is literally like becoming royal to yourself, and becoming, well, the next king when you marry the princess. So basically, Deku took on the, took this pretty much, well, you know, offer, but the, pretty much, the note said the contest will be held in 30, in 30 days. Now, basically, Deku would have gotten be training after, you know, his healing was done, and Deku would have eventually started training with Bakugo and Kirishima, and all of them training to, you know, perfection. Deku having his super strength, getting a little bit of an edge over the others. Now, pretty much, Kirishima would have told Deku to, you know, 
pretty much go down to the castle and try to find some sort of weapon. Or what the weapon you guys grabbed from the cave, you know, look like. Or what was it? Now, they did experiment with the sword, trying to see how strong it was. Then throwing boulders towards it and the sword cutting the boulders. Now, basically, Deku would have trained with the sword. And the sword would be none other than the pretty much older version of um, pretty much, what was it? Excalibur. Now, this sword would be a sword forged from Zeus himself, being able to harness the full power of the lightning bolt. Now, this sword was mainly focused on absorbing the full power of Zeus's, Zeus's lightning bolt, and absorbing lightning and reconstructing it into other blasts. So, you can leave it out on, like, a mountain and let it get, sh uh, you know, electrocuted by lightning. They absorb that lightning and sh store it for other purposes, like shooting it out of the sword in great, you know, dire means or dire times. Now, Deku would have been trained with the sword, and the sword would look like a normal Greek sword that guards would have, but with a ch shiny, glowing blue blade instead of a normal bronze blade. Now, Deku would have been trained with the sword, and Deku would have been, you know, messing with it. Deku having another sheath for the sword, having two sheaths on the side of his, you know, pretty much robe. Now, Deku would have went on to the castle, pretty much trying to look for other artifacts, or going to other places around the, you know, kingdom. Now, Deku, would, the palace, I mean, Deku would go around the palace, eventually coming across a black, a black-haired woman. Deku would have passed by the woman, looking at her and her looking at him. But them having a moment looking at each other's eyes, pretty much, you know, having that angelic type of moment. So they would have been ex they would have been quickly broken up by the guards that were following the woman, escorting her to whatever she was whenever whatever she was going. So basically Deku would have stand there blushing a little bit, thinking about, you know, how beautiful the woman was and that she, and him coming to the conclusion that that must have been the queen or the princess. Now, Deku would have ran back to the area after running a few other couple errands, like getting food and stuff, and would have pretty much stand there, pretty much saying that that was incredible. In fact, pretty much having daydreams about the princess, but getting woke up. Or, you know, interrupted by Kirishima. Kirishima saying that I found some rumors about a very powerful monster that if you take down or we take down, we can be crowned, you know, legends. Now, basically, Deku would have would have smiled, saying, "Okay, let's get let's get this show on the road." And them running or pretty much traveling to the mountains, hearing about the dangerous Medusa. Now, Deku would have heard about the dangerous Medusa, basically them traveling up the mountains and through the, you know, pretty much areas on the island. Now, they would have pretty much ran around and then coming across a, pretty much a, pretty much a white and red-haired boy. And this red-haired, white and red-haired boy would not be another, would be none other than, <laughs> Todoroki. I'm sorry, I can't really talk now. Basically, Todoroki would have walked and seen them, you know, behind them. Pretty much him looking at them and saying, who are you? Now, Todoroki would actually be the prince's, the, what was it? But Kirishima would actually, no, sorry. Todoroki would be the prince. So he would be the king's son, but the king would actually keep Kirishima a, a Bakugo. Sorry. Todoroki, a secret. Basically, Todoroki... Pretty much just being given all the, you know, money and jewels as a prince, but not the, you know, recommendation or, like, you know, the money as a, you know, what was it, the castle of a prince. Now, people knew the, you know, the prince or the king had a, you know, a son, but they didn't know, you know, what the son looked like. Not because, pretty much, the king did have white hair, but the king did not, you know, think that his son would be pretty much accepted in the world if he had two-toned hair and they would think he was some sort of 
you know, um, default. Now, Kir that's what pretty much Todoroki's mother did burn boiling water on Todoroki's face, but it was not because Todoroki was reminded him of his father. Basically, the king is Endeavor, and the king's so pretty much wife only had two children, Momo and Todoroki. So yeah, so basically, Todoroki would have looked at them saying, why are you here? Pretty much Todoroki just being out here to, you know, hike and look for the look for the monster so he can get a couple credits so his father would let everybody know about, you know, his son and know what his son looks like. And they wouldn't be afraid of the hero. So basically, Todoroki would have ran into Bakugo, Kirishima, and Deku pretty much talk to them, explain how he wants to become, you know, a hero so he can show his his dad, the king, that he isn't, you know, abomination. Basically, Deku would have said, okay, he can join us in taking down the monster, you know, or Medusa. Basically, they would have gone to the caves and the, pretty much the relics and pretty much We've been told that Medusa was across the other island, the other island, the main place, you know, where Medusa was. They would have taken a boat and went to the other island where Medusa was. They would have gone into the, gone off the boat, pretty much Kirishima taking guard of the boat, trying to make sure it wasn't going to fade away, pretty much hooking it towards the shore. Now, basically, Deku would have ran towards the caves, looking around for Medusa. Now, they would have been told the stories about Medusa with her stone-touching eyes, her stone-turning eyes, and also the other abilities that she has, like the lower half of the snake, also other stuff. So, Deku would have taken this opportunity to try to find something to do. Now, Deku would have gone and walked around, seeing multiple bones of people and stones, and pretty much statues. Them looking to each other, Todoroki, Todoroki, Kirishima, and Deku, no, Deku, Bakugo, and Todoroki looking at each other saying that this is the, this is the place. Seeing all the, you know, pretty much creatures and, you know, people dead or, you know, not alive anymore. Basically, Deku would have walked around seeing some sort of shiny shield next to somebody. Or a stone statue. He would have grabbed it off the stone statue's body, saying that this may come in handy. And Deku, pretty much grabbing his shield, putting it on him, pretty much getting ready for the you know battle ahead. Taking out his sword. Now at this point, um, the sword hasn't absorbed any lightning yet, so it would be just you know a very strong sword that can cut through anything. And basically, it would have gone to the cave and the pretty much ruin. Or the whatever cave, the ruin. It was made, it was basically more of a ruin than a cave. So they would have been ru walking around the ruins. And seeing that going into the multiple different sections of the ruins. Them getting split it up. And Kirishima having, being armed with a normal sword that was pretty strong. And a kind of a medieval type sword that was, you know, silver. Now, pretty much for Todoroki, Todoroki just had... A very noble, a very, very strong, very good crafted sword because you know he has kingly advantages to getting money and stuff. And also, he would have had a shield as well, and he also would have had a couple knives, and he would have had a um, like a, a pouch for medicine and stuff. So basically, Todoroki would have walked in there. Now, Todoroki also wouldn't know magic. And he would know fire and ice magic, but just enough to make blast of it, not actual constructs. But when he makes constructs of ice, he does exhaust himself or be or like make him, his arm temporarily frozen and makes it completely paralyzed. So basically, Todoroki would have walked around, and Deku would have been walking around as well. Now Todoroki would have been pretty much walking more and more. And Todoroki would have been thinking about, you know, his curse. Now, basically, Tur the power I explained to you guys, that that's what Todoroki told his, you know, newfound companions or people that were helping him with this quest. But, to be honest, Todoroki actually was born with a curse. That's what made his parents or his father 
or his mother despised him the most. His father was very, you know, excited that his son had so much power. So basically, the royal family was actually cursed to have power that would hurt themselves and also their families. Now, the, the king had fire manipulation, and but if the king uses fire manipulation, he would turn into a, a pretty much a red skinned monster when he uses it. And basically, for Momo's powers, Momo was just born normal. She just had, she had like a, kind of like a mermaid type of controlling voice magic type of stuff. But that was basically it. And she also had the ability to summon objects with magic. Basically mimicking her original quirk in canon. Now, Todoroki's quirk was born with ice and fire touch. And he had some sort of band around his head to keep his powers from going out of normal. It was kind of like a frozen type of ice power. So, pretty much Todoroki, when he touched somebody with his with his body without having the headband on, he would basically freeze them on his other side, on his right, on his other side with his fire, you know, hair. Basically, he would burn them, or just, you know, pretty much, you know, make them too uncomfortably, uncomfortably warm. Now, basically, Todoroki, the only way to, you know, pretty much keep that Todoroki's powers under wrap is the magical band around his forehead. And this band would basically look like a white, well, basically just a white, um, you know, headband. Now, also Todoroki had incredible fire and ice, you know, magic for a curse because he had to wear the band to keep his powers from hurting each other, hurting people that he touched or wanted to be with. So, yeah. Also, basically, Taroki, basically, Deku's, so basically, Deku would be walking around, looking around for Medusa. He would have heard stumblings, and he would have seen pretty much a giant snake lower half swarming around the ruins. Now, he would have been looking around, seeing, saying who's there. Now, he would have been, Deku would have been walking around on the top of the ruins, on the outside area, basically looking around, he would have heard pretty much a wrestling, and the ruins would be a little bit more well covered and a lot more pillars and places you can hide. Basically, Deku would have been looking around and would have remembered about the stone, the stone turning, you know, spiders. So he would have closed his eyes, listening for the shifts in the pretty much. Air, not really shifts in the air, but mainly just changes around himself, hearing voices saying to look, and voices like, you know, you should never came here, and I've seen and I've heard tell of the strong, the strongest demi human to be alive, not for long. Pretty much Medusa wrapping around Deku, trying to open his eyes, but Deku being very strong, he's in some of his super strength to keep his eyelids closed. Pretty much producer getting so frustrated that he's, she was about to rip Deku's eyelids off. Pretty much producer tried to, you know, make Deku look or try to just snap snake himself herself. But basically before she could do any of that, Deku pretty much got a hold of his sword after Medusa strangled him with or pretty much wrapped around him. Deku taking his sword out, cutting through Medusa's bottom or the tip of her tail, her falling onto the ground, saying they should have never done that, trying to scratch towards Deku. Now, Deku used most of his focus and most of his speed to try to dodge most of the attacks, getting scratched and cut a few times, his eyes so close, him just swinging not recklessly anywhere where Medusa, you know, talked, or, you know, growled. And Medusa did get, get scratched or sliced a few times on the arms and stomach, but not enough to actually do anything fatal. Medusa smacked Deku so hard that he went flying into a couple of rocks and he opened his eyes. Medusa was about to jump over Deku to try to make him, you know, look at her. But Deku took the shield out, put, him, put it over himself, and Medusa fell on top of the shield, pretty much grinding Deku deeper into the rocks. Now, Todoroki ran out of nowhere taking his headband off, shooting a huge, ball, a huge bolt of ice towards Medusa, pushing Medusa into a couple of rocks herself. You know, Medusa would have gotten back up, looking at her stomach, seeing it was frozen, or nearly frozen, just a little bit of frost on it. You now, Todoroki would have thrown multiple uh, ice shards, or ice, pretty much, you know, 
sickles that were super sharp, pretty much slightly cutting into Medusa. Medusa was slithering away, but got grabbed by Hiroshima. Hiroshima was using her his time gloves to basically, or his time glove to basically try to, you know, age Medusa's toe. Medusa was feeling very weak in her lower half, saying that it was becoming a little bit more, you know, withering, and the green on her toe became more unlifeless and darker, or, you know, blander. Her using the loss of her strength to pretty much whip Hiroshima into a pillar, knocking him out. Now, she would have ran around trying to get away, seeing that, her, you know, the tip of her tail was bleeding a lot. So, she would have tried to hide, but Todoroki, Kirishima, and Deku got back up and started, you know, pretty much jumping her. You know, just straight up, you know, a, you know, straight up just jumping her or tagging on her. And pretty much, they started, you know, punch and scratch Medusa left and right and just huddle her in. Medusa was trying to make them look at her, but most of them tried to close their eyes and just hit aimlessly, and half of the time they were super lucky and did hit Medusa. Medusa had enough, grabbed Kirishima, and pretty much threw Kirishima out of the, pretty much, the top of the relic, or the ruins, throwing him outside of the ruins onto a tree, knocking him out permanently for the rest of the fight. Now for Todoroki, Todoroki started using his fire more and more, trying to blast more fire towards, you know, pretty much Medusa. Now, Todoroki never really trained with his fire because he despised his father. Because his father pretty much made his mother, well, his, his perspective, he, you know, he thought his mother was pretty much so, you know, afraid of his father to a point where she hated, you know, him. So Todoroki started using more of his ice a little bit more, trying to freeze Medusa solid. Medusa was almost frozen solid, but got enough strength to dodge out the way and throw a shard or some sort of a rock straight at Todoroki's face, knocking him out. Todoroki fell on the ground, bleeding from the nose, knocked out. Pretty much folded asleep. Pretty much, Deku would have gotten up, taken a sword out, saying that this is the end for you. Him closing his eyes and running off deeper into the ruins. Medusa following after. Medusa started looking for Deku, taunting him, saying to come out, come out. I don't like hide and seek that much. Pretty much, Slithering around saying to show yourself now. Pretty much her saying, You show yourself now, I promise I won't kill you. Pretty much Deku took out his sword and he took out his, you know, metallic, very shiny, pretty much shield, seeing that it had a reflection. Seeing that this would be very, you know, well, oh, this would be very useful because he used the metallic part to look at Medusa. And looked at where she was so he could find where she is. He found a clear shot and took an arrow that was on the ground from one of the dead soldiers and took one of the bows and made a clear shot right towards Medusa's head, shooting one of Medusa's snakes. Medusa yelled out in pain, saying, I know where you are now, slithering right through the pillar where Deku was hiding behind. But Deku escaped, so Medusa just found an empty pillar or a pillar with no money behind it and heard. A huge sling moment, or like a huge chop, and her yelling out in pain, instantly feeling the pain, after Deku cut her whole lower half off. Medusa fell down to the ground, yelling out in pain, saying to, you know, show her mercy, and Deku saying, you try to kill me, why should I show you mercy? And Deku throwing a huge strike, and, well, winning. So, Deku took Medusa's snake head, and started walking off. And Deku pretty much was walking off, covered and drenched in, you know, whatever. And basically, Deku would have walked out there, seeing his friends get up after getting knocked out and, you know, straight up folded. And they would have looked at Deku, and Deku yelling at them, saying, oh, Let's feast. Pretty much him putting up Medusa's head, saying that this is what we are, heroes. Holding up the, pretty much, Medusa's head. Now, the Medusa's head would still actually be active, so Deku would put it in a sack that he found outside of the relics after, you know, he found off a dead soldier, and pretty much, or a dead, you know, pretty much, you know, hero that was trying to succeed on the plan earlier, and pretty much zipped it up, and said that this may be, you know, a very, a very strong relic. Throwing it towards Kirishima, Kirishima, 
pretty much, no, Bakugo pretty much grabbing it. Now, uh, Kirishima, yeah, so Bakugo was at the, yeah, Bakugo was keeping guard of the ship. Kirishima grabbed the, you know, pretty much, you know, sack, and pretty much said that this is pretty, you know, cool. Pretty much poking the head through the sack. And pretty much they would have said, let's go. And basically, Todoroki running back into the relic, grabbing a few bits of the snake lower half of Medusa, saying this might be tasty. So they went back to actually Todoroki's um, slight cabin, um, slight cabin slash miniature castle type of thing. Now basically, they would arrive at a pretty much a house designed to mimic the Hall of Gods. Basically, Todoroki saying that his father made this for him so he can live, you know, here. So before, you know, eventually he be he can be, you know, crowned the king. Now basically, so Todoroki was the oldest. So Todoroki started to say that let's, you know, start pretty much having a feast, pretty much cooking the and skinning the snake lower half of Medusa. Now. They would have had a great feast, and they actually would have asked Todoroki, you know, maybe we can live here. And Todoroki would be kind of hesitant, but saying that, you know, I have such so much space, that maybe, yes, you can. So, pretty much, we skip a couple days later, and Todoroki, uh, Todoroki, um, Todoroki helped Deku, Kirishima, and Bakugyo move out their house, and move into his Greek-type castle that was designed to look like the Greek you know, legend, the Greek gods, you know, mansion. Now, he would have walked in there, and they would have all, you know, pretty much became, you know, well, basically acquainted here. Now, this main, mainly, the, this isn't a mansion, it's just for narrating purposes. This is actually a palace designed to look like the, you know, Hall of Gods. So, basically, they, pretty much, Todoroki would be saying that I'm going to go to sleep now, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Pretty much, you know, we're safe as well. So, he would call the guards to guard Todoroki's room. And pretty much, Todoroki had a bunch of guards around his palace. Don't get me wrong. Todoroki was still heavily guarded. Even though, you know, Endeavor wanted to keep him sacred. So, basically, Todoroki went to sleep that night. With Deku going out on the top of the roof of the palace. Looking around on the stars. And him having pretty much a talk with his father. Or his great or his great-grandfather. Deku would have talked to his, pretty much, uh, great-grandfather, Zeus, and would have been talking to him, saying that today has been a very, well, good day. I became a hero. Basically, at this point, if I didn't explain earlier, guys, basically, they did go to the city and did explain, and did, you know, pit up Medusa's head for display, saying that we did, you know, slay the beast Medusa, or slay Medusa. Pretty much, Zeus saying... And Zeus saying that that was a very bold act. But Zeus being kind of worried, worrisome, because, or being kind of mournful, just a little bit, because his sister was technically Medusa. But pretty much Zeus would have still, still be happy for Deku since he was, you know, Zeus's last heir. Or was technically so much like a god, or so much like godlike powers. That eventually when Deku go old, he would be descended to the gods and become a god himself. But Zeus didn't tell Deku that yet. Now, Zeus would have told Deku that this is a very strong step, second step to your descent, your descendants of, you know, being one of the greatest heroes on earth. Now, basically, Zeus would have said to Deku that to hold out your sword. Deku would have grabbed his sword. Next to him, pretty much just Deku just being very attached to the sword, and Zeus saying to hold it out and to throw it in the sky. Deku threw the sword in the sky, saying that basically the lightning, pretty much a lightning strike, struck down straight towards the sword, electrocuting it, and it falling back into Deku's hands. Deku saying that it was not hot at all, Deku saying what happened. Now, Deku's fault, pretty much Zeus would explain to Deku that I shocked about. 20% of the strength of the lightning bolt that give you the power of, well, me. Well, half of the power, or percent of it. Now, basically, Deku was extremely happy, saying thank you so much. 
and Zeus saying, no problem, my child. Pretty much, Zeus disappearing in the, pretty much, constellation. Because Zeus did, you know, come there as in, like, a physical form, but it was more or less a vision than, a, it was more or less an astral projection of Zeus, because Zeus wasn't there physically, but was there astral projectively. Now, Zeus it disappeared, disappeared, and Deku looked at himself, grabbing the sword, and him clenching the sword tighter, seeing that his, it was some sort of, uh, pretty much an electric type of glowing uh, gold aura coming around his body. But him feeling so much power, and seeing that he jumped off the top of the palace, falling down, making a slight, a slight crater or imprint of his feet, pretty much saying that this is amazing. But him passing out, using too much power, and this power would go... This power will eventually become Deku's god power. But we're not going to get into that. And I'm going to actually end it off here, guys. So, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. And as always, guys, have a blessed day. Before I go, say a couple more things. Now, basically, for part three, Deku will be... So, for part three, um, guys, what should be next? What should What type of Greek mythology, you know animal or creature or monster should Deku go up against and who should Deku meet next? Now last time I said Deku would meet um Ochaku, Mina and um Denki but I'm gonna make Deku meet um Denki, Mina and Ochaku in part three. Now guys I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys like and subscribe and as always guys have a blessed day. And hope you are ready for what if Irma had the Yami tricks from, you know, what if, you know, welcome to Demon School, Irma. So, guys, I hope you guys liked the video, and see you guys later. Bye.